today we are here at this time discussing uh, though we have uh, uh, numbers are less of uh, the listeners but uh, this discussion will go online as well and i think large audience online will see it and uh, the audience which will be online will be full of startups and the young entrepreneurs so this discussion makes uh, a great significance and uh, as the topic suggests harnessing the power of startups and innovation as we all know that uh, india is uh, one of the global hubs of startups and now we are moving uh, towards these startups becoming unicorns and uh, bringing a paradigm change in uh, india's economy and uh, what makes uh, these startups more agile what uh, makes uh, it more intriguing and how tech savvy approach and commitment to excellence and uh, amount of risk and agility and you know the opportunities which they look for is something very different from the larger nations and uh, that uh, makes them so that uh, makes startups uh, more open towards leveraging technologies and uh, modern technologies like ai ml analytics and a lot of things so uh, today uh, the panelists are from uh, different different aspects of this startup ecosystem and uh, it is going to be a very interesting discussion so first of all i'll uh, introduce uh, the panelist of uh, this uh, uh, discussion and you'll get to know that uh, we have uh, uh, from all the segments the speakers here talking about ta- startups and innovations i'll first introduce you to deepthi rabula chief executive officer of we hub telangana first a round of applause for deepthi please Uh, then we have rahul handa uh, senior vice president of strategic initiatives and one of the key new initiatives of government it is open network for digital commerce a lot of uh, applause for rahul for being here then uh, uh, let me welcome mr vidya sagar singh general manager for digital service and training in the national small industries corporation limited welcome mr vidya sagar so uh, let me start uh, this discussion and uh, as we always should do ladies first so let me start with uh, uh, deepthi uh, deepthi we hub is uh, not a, a regular uh, startup incubation center or something like that but we hub is india's first first and only government led incubator for women so it makes you a bit different uh, uh, or not that you will tell us but i would like to know from you that uh, how this incubator which is specifically for uh, uh, you know for women entrepreneurs how different it is and also uh, what uh, should be the trajectory of these startups actually and uh, what does startup mean and uh, because there are always different misconceptions about startups in this country so just to give uh, give us some uh, uh, more knowledge about uh, what actually startup should always uh, should mean and uh, especially about the women startups so over to you deepthi thank you so much and uh, i think uh, first question that you asked what is uh, we hub and how is it different first of all um, many times we look at women entrepreneurship in the country or anywhere in the world we always uh, kind of use entrepreneurship and empowerment very interchangeably we feel that you know if a woman is given an opportunity to be an entrepreneur she is empowered so i think one of the first things we are doing uh, with we hub is to make sure that we are economically enabling more and more women which means that they are part of the workforce they are uh, creating they are becoming job creators and they are also adding to the economy the second thing that we are also working on is that uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship in general when we talk about uh, um women entrepreneurs there are a lot of compliance gaps that exist there is a lot of financial gaps that exist there is a lot of other uh, gaps that exist which prevent them from getting access to credit or access to like you know vc investment or um, access to e-commerce mar- play- marketplaces and so much more so this is the second thing that we are doing and the third important thing is when we talk about entrepreneurs even in women entrepreneurs we club somebody who is created a nike with somebody who's actually just started making something at home so that categorization and demarcation 
around the different groups that exist even within women entrepreneurs is something very different that we are doing at WeHub. And over the past four years, we've worked with more than uh, 5,300 women, 5,328 or something. The reason we are being so specific, because for us, it is five, it's not 5,000 plus, plus or whatever. We don't believe in the plus plus because each person we work with, we hope that they become an entrepreneur. So that is what. And coming down to your second question about what does startup mean and all that. So um, in my um, limited understanding, obviously there is a Startup India definition that exists, which says that you know it has to be certain years old, it has to have a turnover of less than something, et cetera, et cetera. But for us, a startup is something which actually can scale and become an MSME. Every startup's vision should be, be to become an MSME, become a job creator for their own, um, um, own thing. Second thing is the way we look at uh, startups in our own space is that if somebody has an idea or a prototype, if it is not market validated, if it is not tested with the customer or whatever else, you cannot qualify yourself as a startup even if you're DPIIT registered. Because if you're not making a product which the market wants, you'll not be able to scale. You will be in business, but you may not be profitable. So there are many, many challenges like this. And I think innovation is the biggest part, right? You can't, I mean, obviously services trading is brilliant, but the fact is if there is no uniqueness that is there in your uh, business that you're doing or any innovation that doesn't exist, then you cannot uh, claim yourself to be a startup as such. So those are a few things that we look at. I'm sure there are many other, uh, um, you know, understandings of the word startup because it is as mysterious as life to me. So we keep on learning every day. No, that's actually right. Uh, the trajectory should be actually uh, uh, the culture of unicorn, which has been developed, I think. Uh, but you rightly said that a startup first should focus on, you know, step by step growth. And being an MSME, a mid level company, is uh, quite an important aspect to reach to that level. So, a uh, gradual uh, growth will definitely help. And the idea of having a, a gradual growth in a startup's mind will help them to, you know, stay more grounded and uh, uh, to, you know, uh, uh, look at, look towards a sustainable growth. That's right. Now uh, I'll uh, move to the next uh, panelist, uh, Mr. Rahul Handa from ONDC. Uh, Rahul, uh, first of all, um, I would like to, to request you to give more idea of uh, open network for digital commerce. It is a very popular term though, but still people uh, should, uh, uh, you know, get a better idea of it that what this uh, ONDC is and why these stakeholders should join ONDC, especially the states, why these states should join ONDC. And uh, you have uh, a lot of startups to listening to you online and offline. So why should they be become the part of ONDC? Uh, over to you, Rahul. Thank you. And thank you for having us here. Um, as a first question, just quick show of hands. How many of you have heard of ONDC? Not you. <laughs> thank you. Right. Other than that, so I'm assuming if you haven't heard of ONDC, you don't know that what is it that we are doing? Right. So effectively what we are doing in a very quick, crisp component to it, we are democratizing our commerce. What that means is that, and for us, commerce could be anything, whether it is B2B, B2C, B2G, B2B2C, any of the alphabet soup. Right. Um, and ONDC, by the way, is a Section 8 company set up as an initiative under DPIIT, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And we are, as Deepthi was just mentioning, we are here to basically try and not just get as many startups, but to get as many different sets of underrepresented uh, or semi-represented on the digital commerce platform, right? Um, I, I don't know how many of you know this, but the total number of uh, people in India who are utilizing e-commerce or on an e-commerce platform is less than 6%. It's about 6, 7% or so. That means that, and by the way, most of that is in primarily in the metros. What happens in tier two, tier three towns, et cetera? There are still people living there, right? Now, if there are people living there, they have to, they are doing something around commerce. Now, 
if you really and truly look at it also the total population of india if if we say that let's say there are about 100 or 1000 uh, pin codes in india just about some 16 or 20 or 1000 pin codes are actually covered so we are here to make sure that e-commerce is going to be done is going to be applicable across 75% of india the idea is that your local kirana store as i said the the unrepresented underrepresented uh, underrepresented folks and all how can we get them online how can i make sure that when you as the consumer okay and are just going online and not just going directly to some kind of a large platform and making them larger but how can i make sure that when you go online you're able to find the local kirana store from you why should you end up buying a particular product which is probably coming to you from 20 kilometers away 50 kilometers away what can we do as ondc to make sure that when you look for a particular product that is available to you from your local shop it is delivered to you quickly okay that is what we are doing we are not trying to remove anybody as a matter of fact as i said we are expanding out the market so the way that it works for us is that your existing site right whether you're looking at a bank uh, application or you're looking at a uh, phone application anything anything and everything would then get e-commerce enabled so to speak so effectively speaking you as a uh, as the consumer go to whatever is your front ending app what we would term as a buying application or a buyer application right and you look for spectacles glasses at that point in time that request over the ondc network will be broadcast to various other seller networks so could be going to various other platforms and they have the ability to have locked in all their different sellers so now what you get as a consumer is more options to buy from various other sellers coming off various other networks and as a network participant on the other side as a seller network as a seller right so whether you're a kirana store or whichever other person you are now able to get orders from a wide variety of cities as deepthi and i were just uh, chatting about this sorry deepthi um was literally around the idea that i have a certain set of small sellers can i make them discoverable across india okay can i make them such that their order can be picked up firstly anybody can order and secondly can i make it available that that order will be picked up from them and delivered out I, i'm some of us have played with lego when we were growing up right we think of a transaction literally like a lego block model put it all together buy a product from a particular seller buy a service from somebody else to pick it up or you should be able to go pick it up yourself pay and the money is settled out and everything inside of a trusted network and i categorically say network because that is what we are building we are not building a platform we are not a regulator we are here to enable commerce and that is what we do thank you rahul and I, i think building this network will definitely will uh, also be a great example of implementing technology and uh, without that it will not be possible uh, so my next question will be to uh, to you will be on that only but i'll come uh, to you after a couple of more speakers so when we talk about startups and innovations um, uh, the st- uh, there's one state rajasthan which has uh, a big startup program i start and when we talk about innovation there is one of the key innovations is uh, e mitra portal which of rajasthan which has done a good work great work uh, uh, exemplary work in terms of uh, connecting people with government services so today uh, i want to invite one more panelist here mr umesh chand joshi he is joint director of department of it and communication government of rajasthan a round of applause for mr joshi please and uh, he is also the person who works on e mitra portal uh in the department of it uh, so mr joshi thank you for joining us i'll uh, be coming to you as well uh, 
But before that, uh, let me uh, uh, connect with Mr. Vidya Sagar Singh, uh, General Manager for Digital Services and Training in a very important key organization when uh, you talk of uh, supporting the small organization, the MSMEs. So uh, not even MSMEs, I think more of small organizations or small industries. So the National Small Industries Corporation Limited, NSIC, Government of India. Uh, Mr. Vidya Sagar, I would like to know from you that how you are supporting these organizations, small organizations, they can be startups also and these small industries also. When ONDC talks about connecting the artisans, the small players from various parts of the country. So uh, to do uh, their business, to giving them an e-commerce network. So what support NSIC can provide to these small industries uh, to become MSMEs and to become large organizations? Over to you, Mr. Vidya Sagar. Uh, thank you, Kartik ji, uh, for this uh, opportunity and this great question. So for the uh, sake of the benefit of audience, I would like to know uh, how many of you know NSIC? Do you know NSIC? Have you heard about NSIC or what it is? Uh, yeah, of course, <laughs> panelists. Okay, so only one from the audience. So yeah, so that's why, I mean, it's important. So now I can tell you about, you know, first, I must brief you about NSIC and then there are, we do a lot of things for a startup and MSME. So in the uh, next questions, I'll uh, brief one by one. But NSIC, we are a part of uh, MSME ministry. Uh, we are a mini Ratna CPSC under MSME ministry and uh, we are the only CPSC, I would say rather we are the only uh, commercial organization and government organization who are working for upliftment of MSME. So although uh, Karthik, our name is National Small Industries, Industries Corporation, but we cover MSME. MSME means micro, small and medium. That act have been changed long back uh, to include all this uh, within the domain of the NSIC as well as MSME ministry. So what we do and how do we support startup as well as MSMEs is that we have set up tailored schemes for MSMEs. And uh, so starting from uh, startup I would take up. So we have the uh, incubation centers across India, eight, nine big incubation centers. And we have rather uh, set up some of the incubation centers out of the country also in developing countries because they requested these services. And uh, any any delegation dev uh, visiting from developing country, MEA, Ministry of External Affairs, make sure that they visit one of our uh, center in Okla, which is a flagship center. And any of you who are, uh, you know, keen to know more about this, I think you must visit our Okla center, which is very, very, I mean, amazing. The incubation center we have is starting from very basic for a common layman or maybe just 8th, 10th pass or who have just few lakh rupees starting from there. He can have your start his own business and we help them starting from creating a project report to the funding, setting up the machinery and on the job live training on the machines. So that starts from maybe as low as say fashion designing, bakery making, soya milk making, tofu making, like this, to advance trainings like 3D printing, robotics, AR, VR, and we have tie up with many of the MNCs and their machines, live machines are installed in our campus. So that's, that's the real training. So we help people, we provide both kind of training, skill developments for employability, to get the you know get the students placed in some of the organization or uh, EDPs entrepreneurship development training uh, programs so that uh, a person can start their own business. So this is the uh, what we do to help uh, you know uh, students or uh, prospective uh, you know people to uh, give them the training, help them pre prepare the project report, help them in the getting the fund from the banks and set up and you know all those uh, with training. So this is one. NSIC otherwise have a various scheme mainly in four domain. One is marketing. So we have many schemes in marketing starting from uh, startup to established MSMEs and uh, then we have uh, support services in schemes in finance area. We provide fund funding through bank as well as over and over bank funding we provide in-house our own internal lending. And we have lended few thousand crore rupees to MSME. Uh, you know, if uh, you know, there is a progressive unit and they still, you know, need more fund, uh, they, they have already exhausted their CC limit of the bank. So then we provide that. 
Then we also provide through this technical service center, NTSC we call them, NSIC technical service center, where these incubation and training happens. So we uh, provide uh, common service center, common facility uh, centers are also there. So all the MSME, you know, they don't need to necessarily buy all kind of machineries. We will have some common machines, which you know, they, if they, wa they want, they can get the job work done. And that's the way we try to facilitate. And then, of course, we are into raw material and, you know, I mean, so many things. So in the, maybe the later part of the come, I'll, I'll come into the granularity and technical and maybe very specific schemes and I'll elaborate for the benefit of everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vidya Sagar. I think it is a um, uh, um, uh, uh, pleasure and surprisingly that a lot of work NSIC is doing. Even I didn't know that uh, so much of work is happening, in, in, especially in terms of incubating uh, these uh, small ventures. Uh, great work uh, being done by NSIC, sir. Uh, now I would like to request uh, Mr. Umesh Chand Joshi. Uh, Umesh ji, you are uh, from a state where uh, I Start program is going on and it is um, nationally quite acclaimed uh, program of uh, startup incubation and at the same time when we talk of innovations uh, uh, the state of Rajasthan has come up with products like eMitra portal which is quite efficient enough so uh, tell us about eMitra and uh, first of all uh, this innovation by Rajasthan government and throw some light on uh, startup uh, scenario in the state yeah thank you Karthik ji for providing this opportunity uh, so first of all, uh, I would say that uh, for the startup ecosystem, it is very important that government is supporting uh, the startups and providing them an ecosystem in which they can foster, they can nourish themselves by the support of the government. So I start is one of the flagship project and flagship scheme of government of Rajasthan. And the beauty is that it is uh, being mandated from the top management, from the bureaucracy and from the political. From both aspect, I start and service delivery, Emitra, both are the priority items for every government, previous government, current government, and we are. It is also being supported by the bureaucracy. We are having a continuous uh, leadership uh, from our principal secretary since a long uh, Akhil Aroda sir. He is heading the IT since long uh, for the previous government and this government as well. So uh, with this continuous efforts, the things are taking place. Like I started setting up incubation centers. So first these incubation centers were set up in seven division headquarters only. But now we are uh, going to every district. Like we are setting up incubation center in every district of the Rajasthan. At the same time, we are having our own uh, like uh, portal uh, for the uh, startups e bazaar so in which any uh, startup which is registered in the i start campaign and is curated quality rated from uh, our campaign he can come there on this in the this e commerce platform of the government and can sell uh, sell his products and at the same time government is also providing an opportunity to the startups one startup who is already registered with the iStart and who is having curated up to 15 lakh work order can be given by the government department to a startup which is qualified from this curate scenario. So, uh, and other aspect is like uh, supporting the startups with the existing ecosystem because you would appreciate that eMitra is one of the uh, most appreciated uh, service delivery platform across the country. We are having almost 85,000 Emitra kiosks up to the village level. Almost each and every village of Rajasthan is covered. Uh, each village is having Emitra kiosks. So, because this is a vast network and in some way it is being driven by the government. So, this was mandate from the government that this can be leveraged by the startups as well. So during the recent budget, it was declared that 200 B2C services would be made live on the eMitra portal so that any startup can leverage this vast network of eMitra and can provide his service and can sell his product across the rural area by using this platform. And you would appreciate that recently we have done MOU with a startup for selling up the seeds. Uh, by using this vast network of eMitra. 
at the same time we are also encouraging some innovative ideas related to parking or some other problems which are being faced by the citizens across the uh, state they all are coming on the imitra e platform and uh, the beauty is that onboarding of these startups and business partners is quite easy they just need to come uh, to us submit their require requirements and there is no bureaucratic hurdle we made it live within 7 days so we we made it so simple because it it works in non exclusive manner like we we welcome everyone who is coming to provide b2c service by using this imitra e portal so uh, we we have removed all the hurdles from an uh, startup perspective they can come and can leverage this platform that's amazing to know that how you are uh, also connecting your the service delivery portal to help the startups to reach out to the people uh, to the last mile with their services and products that's really great now deepthi i'll come back to you uh, deepthi uh, uh, india's first and only government led incubator for women so you are dealing with the young professionals first and also the women part of this country so when uh, you work for uh, promoting these young professionals uh, at least three stakeholders are there with you in this hall one is ondc creating a one of the world's biggest e-commerce network for these young professionals one is nsic creating the you know uh, 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 building blocks for uh, these small and msmes small industries and msmes and then uh, the uh, it department of uh, one of the Uh, uh, from a state where a lot of IT is happening, along with the uh, young professional and startups. So, uh, do you think that uh, an organization like We Hub uh, should interact and collaborate with such organizations, and uh, that can create more results across uh, the country? Uh, the simple answer is obviously yes. It makes no sense otherwise. So, one of the biggest uh, things, actually, we are just uh, drawing. images and we were almost whiteboarding right here is that uh, we were just talking actually rahul and i were just discussing on paper obviously that uh, how do we leverage like you know um, let's say there are a lot of small sellers that are there a lot of entrepreneurs that exist across the board and uh, if they need any kind of upgradation skill upgradation or any kind of incubation support in terms of formalization of their business or any kind of credit linkage whatever else it can be done through the uh, nsic and so that you know they can get access to the incubation facilities and all that and then an entity an incubator like we hub can actually make sure that we work with them on the entire business side of things so there is the formalization aspect so which is the compliance and regulatory and then there is the business aspect which means marketing how do you pitch how do you create everything else and that's what incubators need to do so once we are uh, let's say ready then we can actually obviously being we are from the government of telangana so they already have access to government preferential procurement and so much more once we are ready then we can actually have somebody like uh, ondc come in and make sure that you know their product is available for pur pur purchase across the across the globe so i mean on this uh, stage only we could uh, come up with how we can collaborate very simply so i mean the simple answer as again we say is that there is no other way to grow uh, the startups rather than collaborating and i think uh, that's a way to go the second thing also which uh, we all should think about and that is a challenge that we i think as states as uh, incubators as various stakeholders in the ecosystem we always keep running into is that we keep on trying to see that you know we have the best of startups and in that what happens is that there is a lot of siloed efforts that keep happening and there are two disadvantages to this the first disadvantage is that we are replicating each other's work without ever creating something new so we are very comfortable with the fact that you know a char startup got featured on tv or somebody got an order etc 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 so we don't create a usp for ourselves the second challenge is we are all catering to the same one person like we have one kartik as a moderator we all may be working with one startup so we are all uh, utilizing our resources for one thing instead of trying to grow and scale our efforts as well as more people on the ground so that is the second challenge so if we can overcome this and if we can look at each other uh, not as competition but as complementary partners i think india will uh, grow on as a powerhouse of not just uh, the number of startups but also the quality of the startups that we are creating so that we go from becoming a consuming nation to finally becoming a producing nation not in terms of population but in terms of 
jobs and products. So I think that is the thing I would like to add. Very rightly said, Deepthi. I think um, connecting and collaborating with each other is very important uh, if you want a collective growth of the country. Uh, uh, and rightly said that from consuming nation to become a producing nation uh, in the globe. So uh, rightly said, Deepthi. And now, Rahul, I will come back to you. You very nicely uh, pitched uh, here that uh, why states and why stakeholders can uh, should join ONDC and uh, what are the benefits and what are the what is the significance but i would like to know from you that how they can join how they can get the most of the benefit of ondc and uh, um, while telling us that please give us some examples of where in which states you are there active what benefit those states are getting from ondc so uh, uh, how's answer also i would like to know from you more than why should they join sure thank you so um, the hows are also very very important right? extremely important because yeah we are saying we are building out a, a network and and deeply like you were saying right at the end of the day just going and saying i'm going to talk to one or two doesn't work if we want the network effect and the network impact then it has to be one person talking to the next person talking to the next person and that's the way to grow uh the way to look at this is that we have, generally speaking, a programmatic approach towards doing these things, right? So, because obviously we are a small little team and, and technically we also are a startup, right? So effectively speaking, what happens is that we also can't be there in every place. But because we are also a government of India initiatives and to us, our internal states and all are also extremely important. We we have a kind of sort of like a four step process. The first one is we'll come in, we'll do an awareness building uh, session in your state with your different sets of people. Please help us to do that. The second one is around, literally around uh, uh, doing some kind of a masterclass where we'll come in and we'll tell them in deep detail around how and what is it that ONDC can do. Thereafter, there is a hackathon, and I know you don't like them, but there is a hackathon component to it that we can run, uh, which we are also incidentally doing with uh, some of our other partners like Nabard and uh, Sidbi and all also. Right? And then it's a, almost a six-month approach that we can take out there to make sure that we are helping them grow. So back to Sir and to you and to uh, uh, you also. The idea is that can we actually grow that entire ecosystem and help it sustain itself? Because it isn't just necessary that we do one shot and then we're done. And then the fourth part is the technology enablement support. So like, so you're saying that in the state of Rajasthan, you already have a certain set of uh, technology and uh, some kind of portals and all. Can we bring those people onto the ONDC network. Please keep in mind, at the end of the day, what we're looking to do is, turn out, see, why some of, the, some of the startups kind of sort of fail is because they not only have to build a product, but they also have to try and find customers. Our view is if you're really good at building a product, build the product, let ONDC find you the customers. If you've been really, really good at finding customers, but you don't know what are to, what are the different things that you need to be able to provide to them so that you stay relevant, let us connect you onto the other seller side so that you can get it. It's we we are implementing out ODOP across UP, for example, right? The uh, the one district, one product kind of thing. All of these things are such that a product from UP can now be picked up in Kerala, right? We are working with Kerala, we are working with JNK, we are working with UP, uh, we are working with Madhya Pradesh, etc. So we are already working with a lot of states. So effectively, does, so how that is the thing. Now, we've also taken another approach to it, which is we are looking at each of the different sectors, so to speak, looking at agriculture. Can I make sure that the farmer is able to pick up his stuff? On the reverse side of it, can I make sure that the, sam the farmer who wants to sell something can also go over the network and sell his products, produce? The other side to it that we are looking at, uh, the, other, uh, the other verticals that we are looking at are like groceries, 
food and beverages, we're looking at uh, consumer electronics, fashion and footwear, etc. So the I, and and again back to the artisan side to it. Can we look at khadi growers? Can we look at the people who are making kanjivaram saris? Right? Can we can we literally go down to the point of saying that look there are there is a brass uh, large brass uh, industry in Meerut. Can we turn around and say there is somebody who wants to connect to that, but they don't know how to connect to the customer side. So let them try and create a little application which will connect the brass sellers in Meerut to the rest of the world. Okay, those are the different types of things that we want to do. I mean, for all practical purposes, the sellers in Sarojinagar in Delhi, can we actually uh, get them to go online so that you don't necessarily have to drive into uh, to uh, Saroji Nagar, but they're discoverable. Same way, there is a Kirana store somewhere. Can I find the Kirana store who's outside or am I going to order something from 50 kilometers away? So there are various ways that we're looking at it. And so definitely we want to talk to you from a perspective of saying, can we lock into your, uh, or enable you to come on to the ONDC side to it too? Okay, so how are you different from Amazon's and Flipkart's of the world? Well, a very layman question. No, no, it's it's a fantastic question, right? Um, let's put it like this. Uh, actually, so let's do this. Sorry, please. Okay, if you put your hands together, this is a, a this is your platform. So on this side is where you come in as a customer and you say, I want to look for a particular product. It literally goes from inside, which is their proprietary engine and their proprietary product base to the seller side where they have onboarded out a bunch of sellers, right? Now, a couple of constraints that happen. Firstly, as a consumer, what you're looking at now is literally only the ones that they onboarded, right? Second thing, you never know if the products that you're getting or the services that you're getting are right for you or are they right for the platform because they make more money on it. There is a trust deficit, right? Second side, if you're on this side and you're the and you're the seller, as a seller, you're constrained by the number of consumers that the buyer side of it has been able to pick up. Right? So you you've been you're constrained by the number of buyers. If this if this application only had say a thousand buyers, you can't get more orders than from just those thousand buyers. The way we are doing this now is that you will still go to the same buyer, the buyer side application. You'll still put in your request, but now it'll go to an ONDC gateway, which will now send out the request to various seller applications. So the results that you get back are through various sellers, right? So. We're just, we're just breaking up the chain. Now the product sets have come back to you. You decide what product you want and from where. You also get to decide whether you want to take on the services for delivery yourself or you want the seller to sell it or you want to literally just go and pick it up yourself. Any and all of those different options are possible. Who are we to say no? Okay, so a platform will always obviously try and control what their buyer or their customer can see. And similarly speaking, they also are able to control the, the right side of it, which is how much money they're making, uh, what are margins that they're keeping, etc. Uh, we strongly believe that market forces will define what the, what the margin should be. Who are we to tell the buyer application or the seller application on what they're supposed to do or how to do their business? We are not the regulators, right? So we are the people who are here to enable. We are here as the facilitators. Another way to look at it is we've, we are creating like the train tracks, whether you decide to put on a goods train or a fast train, that is for you to decide. Right. And one last thing since you asked, um, we are already in about 50 plus cities, very quietly, We've gotten to about 50 odd cities. And the best part of it is that over 60%, almost 70% of the cities that we are in are actually tier two, tier three cities. We are not here to try and kill any of the applications or those things. We are here to enable them also. 
but mostly there are small people the underserved and the or or the not served one of our one of our key metrics is how do we enable the people who are who have not been on e-commerce from a seller perspective how do we get them on board right so slowly or silently but you will definitely disrupt the segment and <laughs> they oh, and uh, since you also said right by the way what ondc is doing i'm sorry i'm taking it over what ondc is doing has never been done anywhere in the world it has never been done anywhere in the world right in europe for example they are trying to take an, they are tra trying to take a regulatory approach or a legislative approach to try and curtail and do stuff like that we are taking a market driven approach to make sure that all of these different sets of people are going to be online right so thank you rahul and i think we have 5 minutes more uh, and we have couple of more speakers too i have questions for you so from nsic uh, mr vidya sagar uh, throw some light on any some uh, one of the key schemes which you have for these small industries and msmes and how uh, they are getting benefits out of them yeah very relevant question so uh, i'll i mean and there are a lot to talk but since big, uh, time is short so i'll just talk two three main thing so any startup or any msme they need business and the business come normally come from two you know segment either it comes from the private or it comes from the government government business means public procurement so uh, just for information there is a 25% mandatory procurement to be done from the msme it is the act under the public procurement policy 2012 and the government business in india is trillions dollar of you know business in india because it's a developing country it's a big country so and government business includes all those ministry psus railway defense ongc indian iron and all those lakhs of crores of worth of you know business is there so government have made it mandatory for all these government departments to procure 25% from msme and out of that 25% 5% have to be procured from women entrepreneurs this you know i i tried to you know this we uh, relate to this that for women entrepreneurs and this have this women entrepreneur this thing have been just launched some two and a half year backs by the prime minister so this 5% out of this 25 have to be procured from women entrepreneurs that itself is worth lakhs of crore of business and 4% have to be procured from under privilege which is the sc st entrepreneurs and for sc st entrepreneur there is a national sc st hub Uh, it is one of the flagship scheme of the prime minister which is again implemented by nsic on pan india basis so a lot of support lot of financial assistance lot of subsidy being provided to sc st entrepreneurs to you know reach to that 4% because currently it's not even 1% so so that's uh, you know all kind of support there is a vast list of you know this support available 100% subsidy for uh, international exhibition domestic exhibition stall air fair and the lab testing export promotion council membership for doing course from iim so many things so you can just visit scst have dot in website and you will get, get to know all the details this is one second is uh, startup since this topic was related to startup so normally any startup and as uh, told by deepthi startup is very very you know wide term so it's not only the dipp definition but for a normal layman you know and a student a startup means if he is starting any business so what is the facility of support available how can he expand it what are the credit support what are the marketing those kind of thing right so as far as startup government have realized this problem that all the, in the all the government procurement there was restrictive clauses no the you must have five year of experience if you must be aware you know that your women entrepreneur must be facing all this problem so you must have these many uh, you know experience in this business this you must have these much of turnover in already in this so for all those problem even the msme ministry and nsic have you know come out with the schemes to give opportunity to newcomers and new even if you do not have any business prior experience and those kind of turnovers so uh, we have a scheme called single point registration scheme which helps you participate in government procurement so still we give you some minimum kind of you know a limit and we issue the certificate that you can participate in government and we rather if you are not able to still not able to we help you know we nsic participate on behalf of the msme in the government tenders that's called consortia and tender marketing scheme very very uh, useful scheme so this is one and uh, then the second thing comes about the uh, financial support to startups and maybe for innovation because innovation is one of the topic so uh, if i talk about startup or even for msme if you remember 
when uh, our honorable finance minister uh, nirmala sitaraman ji announced the 3 lakh 20 1000 crore package of far msmes 3 year back during the covid overall that was part of the overall 20 lakh crore so there was an announcement of 50000 crore fund of fund so that is being implement, implemented by nsic so that fund is known as sri fund c fund self reliant india fund atmanirbhar bharat campaign of the government so self reliant india fund 50000 crore fund of fund scheme is there 10000 crore government have already given 40000 is supposed to come from the VC fund and we have already set up NSIC Venture Capital Fund Limited a separate subsidiary to you know drive it in a focused manner on a SPV model a special purpose vehicle and it in only I mean uh, of course after announcement there were a lot of formalities to be done with the SEBI registration and so many things but when we launched in, in last seven or eight months only we have already impaneled 25 VC fund we have already made commitment of 3000 crore rupees of funding and which is again a record in fact i mean there was a discussion in the ministry that you know initially there were with the certain things people were not very comfortable whether it will take up but the result is amazing so this is again for this and this is all these are growth fund and this is for the first time in india otherwise normally what happens for msme in a startup there is a debt loan available loan and when you take any loan first loan is very difficult to get and you know and when you take loan meter is down from the day one right interest down a or up, if you are not able to pay it, then you get declared as NP and a lot of problems. So this is equity infusion. For the, this is very rare. Mm -hmm. So government will take up to 15% stake in the growth oriented MSMEs for a period of 15 years. And you know, ultimate aim is to encourage them to get listed in the SME exchange or even in the main exchange. So that's a very rare, a very special. In fact, in the, during the MSME day celebration in the Vigyan Bhavan, Prime Minister talked about this, you know, or, uh, you know, so that is the one of the, uh, again, implemented by NSIC. So uh, you can visit the website nvcfl.co.in if you want more information, you will get to know all the scheme, FAQ, everything. So, uh, coming back to last point, you know, providing marketing support to startup and uh, maybe MSME and all those women entrepreneurs for information, NSIC already have e-marketing portal, a B2B e-marketing portal called msmemart.com. So, this we are already into the process of integrating with ONDC. We already have 2 lakh member registered on it. Fresh and, you know, 10 days back, you know, we signed an MOU with our own ministry in the presence of cabinet minister and everyone. We are going to get integrated with Udyam portal, which have 1 crore MSME registration. And it was uh, with, the, with the direction of Niti Aayog and all those uh, MSMEs registered on Udyam portal will be automatically onboarded on msmemart.com to provide this e-marketing support. So anyone, if you are interested, uh, then you can visit msmemart.com. We also have mobile app MSME uh, Glo uh, Global Mart. You can download that. We are uh, available on Umang. We are available on the mobile seva app store of Government of India. So uh, these are some of the uh, you know uh, initiative from NSIC. So and I hope uh, this will be useful for our audience. Finally, all the MSMEs, small industries, startups who are listening to us online and offline, it's a bunch of opportunities and support NSIC is. Just floor them and uh, leverage uh, what all support Government of India is uh, giving to these companies. Thank you so much for informing us uh, about it. Yeah, Karthik, sorry, I think uh, very important. So innovation was missed. It. So recently, since it's a recent announcement, so I would like to inform to everyone that MSME Ministry have come up with the innovation scheme support where, you know, funding from, you know, up to one crore funding and even to the student on various incubation, design, intellectual property registration, which is the copyright patent. And for everything, government is providing financial assistance of up to few lakh, one crore for plant and machinery, design, patent. So this is also, you can visit the website dcmsme.gov.in and you will get all the schemes of the MSME ministry where you will find this innovation scheme support and uh, you can avail. Uh, Perfect, Mr. Thanks. Singh. Thank you so much. And finally, uh, Mr. Joshi, quickly in a minute or two, uh, add on to uh, what you had said about promoting uh, startups in the state of Rajasthan. Uh, yes, so uh, from uh, I start perspective, uh, as uh, I already mentioned about the supporting ecosystem from the government for uh, this entire ecosystem. And uh, in the same like, uh, we would uh, really, uh, we are looking forward to integrate with uh, you, uh, sir, regarding this uh, ONDC so that we can collaborate uh, we can work in collaborate manner and uh, that was rightly said by uh, you that uh, the complementing uh, the 
ecosystem like uh, each other like same startups are working on the same ideas the same idea is being replicated by n number of startups and their success rate is reducing so complementing each other with the technology with the innovation uh, it is really crucial from the aspect of uh, this entire ecosystem and the government support is very important aspect and for this i'm uh, really uh, glad to see that uh, each and every state government central government everyone is putting efforts to foster this ecosystem entire ecosystem in each and every way in which they can do for it thank you thank you mr joshi and i think uh, uh, we don't have a time for online questions so our questions can be taken offline these speakers are there with you this hall is smaller don't let them go <laughs> but uh, i think uh, four major stakeholders interacted here and we got to know that yes collaboration is the key uh, is, uh, when we talk of promoting these startups and uh, definitely and uh, four major stakeholders are here in future if you interact and if you collaborate please give a credit to me that i <laughs> brought all four of you on the same dais just uh, jokes apart uh, very uh, nicely uh, shared thoughts by each of you here and uh, key uh, points being discussed how innovation can be promoted how startups can be promoted in the country and thank you for uh, joining us and lastly uh, the three cheers for uh, the women power so let's uh, give more power to uh, wish more power to the v hub and we should see uh, more uh, such incubation centers supported by governments uh, promoting especially the women power of this country so thank you so much uh, here we close this session